Thanks for tuning in to Witch Wednesdays with Steph and Tara, where we share our knowledge as we chat about a new witchcraft topic every Wednesday morning. Welcome back to Witch Wednesdays. This is Steph. And this is Tara. And you are listening to episode 65 about the air element. So we gave a single episode last year about the elements and how they interact um, and their powers. But since we're doing a slightly deeper dive this year, I thought we'd do one episode per element. This is also a good refresher for me. I used to do a lot of elemental magic and my path has changed over the years and I don't do as much anymore. So we're going to start with this element and we'll have one hopefully per quarter until we've got all four elements other than spirit. (laughs) And we have tried to plan them seasonally. So yes. that is why air is first because it is associated with the spring season. So that's kind of the order that they are going to go in. Yes. But it's so some of this information is going to be the same as what we talked about in that elemental uh, episode at the end of last year, but it should have other additional information in each episode just to do a little deeper dive on everything. Yes, it'll be a little deeper dive. It will also be a little bit of um, kind of a throwback because we'll talk about the associations. There's quite a few of them, so that'll take a little bit of time. But this should be a shorter episode for those of you um, that are excited about short episodes. And then I promise the next episode will be super long to make up for it. (laughs) It really is. (laughs) But air is a pretty exciting one to start with because it is the least used and least understood Mm -hmm. Um, All of the elements, even though it's constantly surrounding us and it's definitely the most abundant of all the elements, but because you can't touch it and work with it physically, like you can the others, some witches tend to shy away from using it, but that shouldn't be the case because it's definitely the most powerful because it can control all of the other elements, but it's almost impossible to control itself. So there are a lot of unique aspects to working with air and it's kind of a fun one even though it's like least used definitely recommend testing it out in all of the ways that we are about to talk about yes so to start with let's just start with associations there are a lot like i said um as steph mentioned it is associated with the spring season and the time of day is dawn so it's uh there always in the spring uh the direction it's associated with most often is east uh the deity is god rather than the goddess, Uh, just because of East, Spring, Dawn, all this kind of comes together. You can see where these uh, associations, they make sense. (laughs) They all come together. The colors are yellow, white, and silver often. And air is kind of a weird one because it's kind of like the other elements got their colors first. And then air was sort of left over. So it's most often yellow but the unique thing about air is that you can tailor the color to the outcome you're looking for yes so if you are doing an air working uh associated with positivity that would be a good one for yellow but if it's more calm then a lot of people use pale blue and then use dark blue for water and uh silver gray is also used for like a stormy outcome so there's yeah lots of different ways to use that and these like color associations we've talked about that before it can be the color of your altar cloth uh candles sachets uh petitions or just how you represent the air element on the altar could be one of those colors Mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons why so many people shy away from using air because it's not as definitive as some of the other ones because it has not a good way to physically represent it always so that's why it's so versatile, but a lot of people don't like that it doesn't have, like, fire. You have fire. <laughs> so the zodiac signs associated are Libra, Gemini, and Aquarius. So And that's come up, we would mentioned in the elements episode, but it's come up that uh, you don't need to have your sun sign in that zodiac to be able to work with that element. Correct. It can be easier. If some, somewhere in your, it, it, you don't have just a sun sign. We talked about birth charts and things like that, that, that you are, can be in a lot of different um, zodiac signs for your sun, moon, rising, all of those things. 
and it can be easier and come more naturally to work with the air element if you, one of your some some placement in your birth chart is within those three zodiac signs but you can work with any of the elements even if you're not of that sign uh the easiest way to do that is to work with air when the sun is in that astrological sign yes so if you want to work with air while the sun sign is in libra that's you know in that um october range in there end of september through mid-october yep. uh is the libra sign so working with air when that sun is in that astrological sign is a good way to do it and a lot of witches then plan out their year elementally by working with one element three times a year in each one of those sun signs so as they progress that's how they change over their spell work And a lot also do it when the moon is in that phase. So you see a lot of posts on Instagram saying, oh, the new moon is in Libra or the full moon um, is in, you know, Gemini. Then that's kind of what that means is that the moon passes through that zodiac sign. Mm -hmm. And that is much more frequent than the 12, you know, sun signs that happens every three or four days that the moon stays in one sign and then moves on to the next one. So that comes around way more regularly. So that's also a good time to sort of work with the element. It's just more uh, prevalent, easier to work with during those time periods. For the moon, because it is more uh, frequent, you do have a smaller window, but it happens more often. So I know a lot of people that prefer doing the moon in the different zodiac signs versus the sun, just because they can more easily plan if they miss this window three days later, they have the window again. So if that's a priority for you, it is easy to find one uh, in the correct sign. And there are quite a few other associations too. We talked about uh, crystals last time, but just as a refresher, they are citrine, quartz, amber, aventurine, topaz, azurite, jade, tourmaline. There's actually a ton of uh, crystals that are associated with air. And as a note, uh, we talked about this in the crystals episode, but quartz is associated with everything. So quartz is going to be on the list for every single element. And that's because you can program quartz to do whatever it is that you want it to do. It's like the most general and useful and represents a broad variety of things. So if you don't have one of the other ones that we've mentioned, quartz works for everything. So it's awesome. In other words, Uh, there's a lot of plants associated with air usually think smelly uh i mean not bad smelly but very anything uh, flowering yeah yeah. (laughs) so um aspens clover frankincense lavender lemongrass mirror which i hate that word but uh, pine vervain cedar all of these are associated with air a lot of i mean that a lot of plants and trees in general are associated with the earth element, but mm-hmm. for the air element, I mean, there's plants associated with every single element we'll get into, but yeah. for air, it's uh, flowering plants generally. It makes up a lot of that list. Think of ones that are pretty and you can smell. <laughs> Indeed. Pretty the much. metals associated with air are traditionally copper and tin and Copper and tin aren't as um, prevalent as some of the other ones in terms of jewelry because some of the other elements are associated with gold and silver and a lot of witches like to use the elements to enchant their jewelry. Mm -hmm. Uh, So if you do have anything that's copper or tin that could be enchanted with the air element, but of course just go with your gut. Anything on this list, if it doesn't feel right to you in your practice, then you can, these associations are just like the generally, you know, most common exactly. acceptable ones, but it can change. So if you have silver jewelry and you feel most comfortable in enchanting that with air, if that's your um, element that you want to work with, that's perfectly fine too. I would say the vast majority of all of my enchanted jewelry is silver because I'm just more comfortable working with silver. I have all the elements tied to silver jewelry just because I'm more comfortable working with it that's a personal preference so just can always always change <laughs> so with everything that we say on this list you can change it to what you feel when what you're working you with it is right <laughs> yes 
There are also a lot of animals associated with the air element. And of oh, course, gosh, it's anything yes. with wings. <laughs> so we are definitely not going to do that full list. So it's all wings, <laughs> insects, birds, and bats. But I am not running down a list of every bird. It's not going to happen. Yeah. And there are quite a few spirits as well. So every element has a spirit, an elemental yes. spirit. So the air elemental spirit is called a sylph. And that is S-Y-L-P-H-S. Notice how I did not try and pronounce it. And also angels and any air-based fae. There are obviously a lot of air-based fae. Yes. Tons and tons. Um, If you have an altar or if you just work with more traditional tools, the wand or athame are usually connected to air. Depends on the tradition. Um, So if you have a specific tradition that says only the athame or only the wand, follow that tradition, but both wand and athame have been um, linked to the air traditionally. Incense, obviously, but not for Seth. A bell, feather, and smudge sticks can all be put on your altar to represent air. Air is closely associated with sound, so Mm -hmm. that is why a bell often takes that spot. Yep. Because you hear it through the air, and there's no other direct tie to sound. None of the other elements really fit. Correct. So, and sounds important. (laughs) So uh, there's a ton of magical uses for air. It's tied into a lot of rituals. It's in a lot of castings and workings um, with other elements. But if you just want to invoke just air, a lot of times involves burning of incense or smudging rituals. We've talked a ton about using smudging and cleansing rituals, using incense and other um, smoke type things also breath work and ritual movements and dance utilize the energy of air a lot of times um i know a ton of witches that have taken up meditating and a lot of that focus is always on your breath and the element of air the energy of air so the direction of the wind can be used to enhance certain types of spell work as well Uh, a lot of times we've talked about wind going and just feeling the wind before a spell or assisting with um, connecting to nature, but the direction of the wind can also influence your spell work. So that's something to keep in mind um, when you're invoking air within a spell or a ritual. So if you want to feel more connected to air, try breathing deeply and feeling the air in your lungs. It breathes life into you and into the magic you're about to perform. This is a great visualization technique. Um, Once you have really got your center down and can visualize your energy. Go for a walk outside and focus on the breeze. I love this one. This is such a great, easy way to connect with nature for uh, all natural witches, even if you live in the city, especially if you're in the windy city like Steph. (laughs) There's always (laughs) Indeed. A lot of witches and non-witches love hanging wind chimes near your home. Wind chimes are so easy to have out and about if you're in the broom closet no one will question it but every time you hear them um, it can invoke a spell depending on what if you've enchanted them at all it can also be part of your home protection so creating a creative pro completing a creative project excuse me can also be used as a form of connecting to the air element i'm not good at creative projects so i don't personally use this but (laughs) it is uh a time-honored way to connect with air is focusing on a creative project or learning a new skill. Both of these are ways to incorporate the air element and the air element energy into your everyday. Another great way to incorporate the air element into your witchcraft is to make your own incense. Incense, of course, is associated with the air, but making your own uh, is easier than it sounds. So definitely a fun project there. Using your sense of smell in general, since it's associated with uh, flowers and it, again, the sense of smell is the one thing that is connected to air and not really any of the other elements. So just using incense, of course, for the the burning and the um, smoke through the air, but also just the scents going out into nature and just smelling anything, all those floral um, flowering plants that we talked about, a great way to sort of get to know the air element if it's something that you've like never really worked with to just kind of notice those things Mm -hmm. it is also associated with 
uh, sort of inner wisdom and clearing your mind, great for succeeding in psychic work, um, if that's something that interests you. Yeah. Um, that is also associated with the air element and wisdom, knowledge, study in general, but also like specifically divination and foresight is where you want to sort of connect with the air element and use that in your spell work. Yes. When you are breathing deeply and inhaling air and thinking about the energy of air filling you, a lot of times that helps clear your mind naturally. Try taking deep breaths, counting them out, releasing them, taking them again. Do this eight times and I almost guarantee your mind's going to be a lot clearer than when you started, no matter what the circumstance. So it really helps you find inner wisdom, which connects you to your psychic work, especially divination. So I thought I'd end with just a general positive air spell that's really simple when you first start working with the element. Um, Take a large pliable leaf. This can be from any native tree or plant uh, around your home. And then get a biodegradable pen or marker. Uh, These are a lot easier to find than you might think. You probably have one in your house. And what you're going to do is you're going to visualize a positive outcome that you're seeking. It can be professional. It can be love. It can just be, I want to feel more connected to air. Uh, And you're going to write either a word, a phrase, a symbol, a sigil on the leaf that represents that outcome to you. You're going to really want to focus your energy while you're writing and focus on the positive outcome that you're looking for. Then you're gonna just go somewhere with a high wind and release the leaf into the breeze to carry your intention into the universe. You can be on a hill, you can be on a balcony. You can tell where I normally am on a balcony. Um, (laughs) But If you do not have a biodegradable pen or marker, you can also use a toothpick and just scratch it into the leaf. Yes. So make it a little easier for you there. I, I like writing because I like to be able to see, but I also am not good at sigils. So if you have a favorite way, um, like I said, you can use a sigil, a symbol, a phrase, a word. You just really want to invo- embody whatever your intention is into what you're using. You can use a toothpick. You can use your fingernail. If you have a fingernail, you want to scratch into that leaf. And then you're going to just let the wind carry it into the universe with your positive intentions. And another easy air element spell is called the winds of change spell. So this is for if you're looking to bring something new into your life, you just need a paper and a pen. And ideally the pen will be in the color of what you're trying to manifest. So green is money, brown is home, blue is for health. If you need a refresher on candle color associations, that's like in the candle episode and those color associations work for everything. So we had that last year. And then all you have to do is write what it is that you want to change. And then hold the paper and speak it out loud. And then fold the paper and place it in a safe spot out of sight. So that's a really simple air element spell since the winds do bring about change. Mm -hmm. Easy way to connect with that. And it's also a great spell if you are resistant to change and reluctant to change like I am. (laughs) I don't like change. I don't enjoy it. So having this sort of spell work, like, you know, inevitable change is coming or something needs to change, but you're, you know, un- unwilling to take those next steps. That's often me. Um, this is a great spell to sort of assist you on your way in that. And if you are on Patreon, you have already seen this, but there is an air and aura spell that's up. So if you are interested in how to sense your aura, not like, color but just like sensing your aura in general around you and also how you can change that for different situations um that is an air spell that's up on patreon and it's very helpful if you are an empath who absorbs sort of the energies and feelings of people around you especially in a crowd and you get easily overwhelmed by that and like not changing your aura based on the situation can be really helpful so that is up on patreon if you have not checked that out yet definitely head over there and we will have that linked in the uh description in the show notes for sure and you can always find it on our website at whichwednesdays.com yeah guys there's so much really good information on whichwednesdays.com if you haven't been there lately Steph did an amazing job of organizing it so things are easier to find (laughs) so head on over and look at it it's it's really awesome 
She's made a whole community there and all the links to everything we talk about, as well as all of our Patreon stuff, um, the discord, uh, if you want to get your Sabbath boxes, everything is linked on there. So it's a really great resource to get you started on all of the things that we have out there. Trying to make it as convenient for you as possible. And for the record, if uh, you might already know this and have seen it because we've been doing it for a couple of weeks, but there are uh, show notes of all of our episodes rather than transcribe the entire thing, just highlighted bullet points because some of them are longer. And I know a lot of you listen while you are in the car or on public transportation and <laughs> it's hard to take notes. So I appreciate that you even want to take notes. <laughs> that is awesome. Great. Guys. Um, love that you're getting good information from this, but to make it a little easier for you, we do have the show notes up on which Wednesdays and up on Patreon, either one. Um, they're the same thing. <laughs> so <laughs> you make it easier for you to get that. Those are up every Wednesday. Ta-da! And that is all we have for you this week for the air element. Hopefully you found that helpful, learned something new. If you have any questions or want to discuss uh, the different ways that you use the air element in your practice, whether you are brand new to it or have been practicing elemental magic for a long time, you can definitely check out uh, the Discord server. We have a little chat. Go- we have lots of chats going on there. <laughs> Very active on there. There's like 100 of you on there, I think, right now. And chatting about all kinds of things. But specifically, every Wednesday, there's a chat based on the podcast. So you can get recommendations and tips from lots of other witches. So if that interests you, definitely check out Discord over there. And like we mentioned at the beginning, air is usually the least utilized element, even though it's everywhere. Um, It's oftentimes misunderstood. So any information shared is always appreciated on the air element. Um, I know this is a shorter episode. Like I said, the next episode is going to be so long, guys. (laughs) Yeah, next episode, uh, which we mentioned before, is about finding your pagan path if you're not um, interested in the Wiccan deities that we had just talked about in the previous episode. Um, So all of those things coming in the next episode so it's going to be kind of (laughs) long but that is all we have for you air element we will see you next week bye guys thanks for listening need even more witchcraft subscribe to our patreon account for tons of exclusive bonus content and order supplies from our etsy store reach out on instagram at which wednesdays podcast or by email to which wednesdays at gmail.com if you have any questions or comments find all these links and more at which wednesdays.com